Today I'm going to show you how an all-wheel drive system works in your car. Now looking under the vehicle, this is a rear-wheel drive bias setup. So we have the engine situated at the front longitudinally, and that feeds the transmission located here in the middle. Now the transmission is then going to send its power from its output to this transfer case, and that's going to determine how much power is to be sent to this pop shaft to the front differential, as well as the rear differential through this drive shaft over here. So the engine's out on the crane here. You can see just how long this transmission is due to the four-wheel drive transfer case that comes up to the front differential here. Now I've already got a full teardown on this exact transmission and how it works, so I'm going to link that in the description above if you want to see how everything works up to here. But for the purpose of this all-wheel drive video, we're going to be focusing on this transfer case section. Now the transfer case is responsible for taking the output coming from the transmission and transferring the power from the rear wheels, which is what this vehicle is biased to, to the front wheels in case of slippage or depending on the drive mode. Now the transfer case is bolted to the output of the transmission and is held in by a bunch of 14 millimeter bolts all the way around. So I'm going to remove these next. Just going to break it free with my breaker bar. So with the transfer case loose, I'm just going to pry it off. Just pull that right off the transmission there. So here we've got the transfer case removed from the vehicle. Now looking around here, we've got the input shaft that comes from the transmission. We've got the output shaft here, which goes to the rear wheels. And then we have the other part here that goes to the front wheels where the prop shaft plugs into. Now it's important to know that this is an all-wheel drive setup, not a four-wheel drive setup. Now with four-wheel drive, the driver has a selection to select either two-wheel drive or four-wheel drive. And this locks these two together, which means that you can't really go at high speed because that'll cause binding in this transfer case. Now an all-wheel drive setup will allow the computer to automatically transfer torque to the front wheels based on road conditions. It'll also vary the amount that you could do from rear to front as opposed to just four-wheel drive or just two-wheel drive. And it's not going to allow any binding between the systems because there's a clutch inside of here that allows slippage between the two. So this is better suited for on-road use. Taking a look around the transfer case here, at the top here we have the fill plug and at the bottom here we have the drain plug. We've got the electrical computer connection here and the output shaft at the back as well as a vent tube. Now I'm going to attempt to break the fill plug free here. And I'll just zip that off. Now the drain plug is just a half inch. I'm going to tip this over and drain the fluid out. Now in the front of this case I'm going to remove this Torx bolt here. Yeah. I don't know why they use Torx on this one here. Now with all the bolts removed around the housing already, I'm going to attempt to separate the front cover here. Oh crap. I'm running with my brother's old shirt here. I'm going to make a mess. Oh boy. It's a big mess. It's getting my cardboard studio all messy. Alright, and there's the cover removed. You can see inside the cover we have a set of bearings here, which is the front main bearing of this input shaft here. And that just rolls around like that. On this side here, this is just an oil seal. Now taking a look inside of here, we've got the input shaft over here, and as I rotate that input shaft, you can see just how that output shaft for the front prop shaft rotates. We've got the main bearing here for the front prop shaft as well. Inside of here we have the electrical connection that goes to the clutch that controls this all-wheel drive system. There's a bunch of oil baffles inside of here. And in terms of oil level, this here is the fill port, which means that from this level downward, all of this is going to be covered in oil, which means that this chain is going to help to slosh things around and cool things down. Now if we take a look at the all-wheel drive system from a mechanical perspective, now this vehicle is rear-wheel drive based, which means that the engine and transmission sits along it and then you have the transfer case located in the middle underneath the vehicle. Now under most conditions the engine's power is going to be sent to the rear prop shaft to power the rear wheels. Now depending on what mode the all-wheel drive system is in, it's going to take some of that power away from the ones going to the rear wheels and direct it to the front wheels for a maximum in this setup of a 50-50 split in torque between the two. Now what controls the all-wheel drive system is this coupling here and it's powered by this electromagnet. And now this electromagnet is going to push against a control clutch here inside of here which has only two bands pretty much and a cam which is those needle bearings. And then that in response is going to push against the main clutch. So what this does is it separates the electromagnet from actually pushing on the main clutches which are rotating with the drive shaft. Next up I'm going to remove these four bolts here that hold the main assembly on. I'm going to remove this big shaft nut on the output shaft here. Alright, I got the puller on there. And there's the flange removed. Now at each shaft there's actually a seal here. And I turn this transfer case over. And the chain already popped off. Just got to remove this little oil baffle here. Remove that oil baffle. And then I can pull this shaft assembly out. Pull the Inside of here we have the plug that goes to the outside and we've also got a temperature sensor. So if your all-wheel drive system light is on, it probably means that the temperature inside of here is too hot. And they've disabled all-wheel drive 
for it to cool off. Now the back of the casing, there's also another main bearing that goes to the output shaft of the rear. So here we've got the entire transfer case removed from the vehicle. Now starting at the front here, we have this large output gear for the front prop shaft, which is going to plug into here. And it's got its two main bearings. It's a pretty heavy piece. Now joining that is this big heavy duty chain. It's about an inch wide. It feels pretty strong. Now that chain is going to join over here to the input shaft. Now normally this input shaft is bolted to this clutch pack, but we removed the bolts, that's why it's free to spin. Now this clutch pack is what's responsible for taking the electrical signal from the computer and transferring the torque coming from the input shaft away from the rear output shaft and to the front shaft over here via the chain. Therefore there's always a direct linkage from the input shaft to the output shaft at the rear, it's just that this clutch pack controls how much of that torque is stolen away from the rear and translated to the front. Now the top here we've got what looks like a slip ring or a clock spring and that allows this clutch to rotate but still allow this electrical signal to go into this clutch pack. So we're going to open this up to see what's inside. Now there's a couple of snap rings I need to remove here so to remove those I'm going to use my state-of-the-art snap ring removal tool here. And now with those three incisions made there I'm going to start picking out the snap ring. I find with all these snap rings removed and go ahead and remove the shaft here and remove the shaft here and here you can see we've got a direct linkage from the input shaft to the transmission to the rear wheel drive part and let's say you know this is primarily a rear wheel drive vehicle now here on the output side of the clutch you can see this here is the flange that will bolt onto there and these teeth would lock into these teeth over here to feed the chain over to the other side so basically the rotation of this is the output of this clutch and what goes to the front wheel. This here are the two half pieces that hold the needle bearings against the shaft here to allow it to rotate. Now here we've got an exploded parts diagram of the transfer case and all of its components. Now we have the input shaft which is going to start over here at the beginning of the transfer case and you'll notice that it's got a solid shaft that leads out to the back part which is going to stick out the tail shaft of this transfer case so therefore you can see how the power is directly going to be transferred to the rear wheels. Now teeing off of that we have this control clutch which is going to spin off through this gear over here and this chain setup to the front wheels which is going to go through the front prop shaft over here. Now this control clutch is what's going to steal some of that power away from this shaft and direct it through this chain to the front wheels. Now some modern luxury vehicles will have another clutch in between here to completely separate the rear wheels from the front wheels and therefore you can actually select which wheel gets 100% of the torque. Now it appears that you need a special tool to lock onto these three clips here to rotate and unscrew this top part of the clutch out but I don't have that special tool so I'm just going to use my own special tool and grind it open. Shoot looks like I'm making a big mess again. There's a lot of fluid in this clutch. I'm going to have to wipe that up with my brother's old shirt. So I'm going to remove this section here. That looks like the clutch that actually does the activating because it's got the wire attached to it. And then here We've got the actual physical clutch. I'm just turn that upside down oh, and remove all the clutches. Now the way this clutch pack works is we've got this electromagnet that's going to activate, it's going to apply pressure. Now we have these control clutches that sit in front of it. Some of them are externally splined that lock to the output shaft housing over here to the front wheels. And the ones that are internally splined are splined to this little ring over here. Now when that clutch activates, the output of this is going to be locked to this ring here, but it's also still applying pressure in this direction. Now what's going to happen is this ring here has these six ball bearings on the inside here. Now even though pressure is still applied, these ball bearings are going to allow this ring here to rotate relative to this ring over here which forms the front part of this clutch pack over here. Now because pressure is still being applied by the electromagnetic clutch you're only separating the rotational motion of the engine which is on this side here from your control clutch so you don't burn things out. The pressure is still going to squeeze this viscous clutch together to activate it to control torque. Now how it does that is this entire thing is encased in fluid and just like a transmission clutch you have two sets of clutches here one that are internally splined that are locked to the input shaft coming from the transmission and ones that are externally splined that lock to the outside casing over here. Now once you lock your input shaft and your output shaft together, you're essentially taking torque away from the input shaft and transferring it over to the output, which is the body out here, to go to the front wheels. Now by completely locking up this clutch, you are going to be transferring 50% of the power coming from the input 
to the front wheels and that's how you get a perfect 50-50 split. Now by regulating the pressure through this electromagnet, you can allow some slippage in this clutch here, which is going to regulate the amount of power up to about 50% that goes to the front wheel. So for example, if you want a 70% rear bias for everyday use, for example, then you wouldn't lock this clutch up with complete pressure and you'd allow some slippage going on here. Now if we take a look at the all-wheel drive system from more of a electrical and controls perspective, in the middle here we have the transfer case. Now it takes most of its commands from the all-wheel drive control unit, which gets most of its information from the ABS actuator and all of the ABS sensors located on each wheel. It'll also communicate with the engine module, the CAN bus, as well as your instrument cluster so the driver knows what's going on. Now once the all-wheel drive unit has gathered all its readings, it'll then process it and transfer the appropriate power to the front wheels to enable maximum traction going forward. Now when the clutches are not locked up, you can see that I would rotate this input shaft here and that's going to rotate the rear drive output shaft directly while this one is held relatively stationary and is not moving. Now that's pretty much all the components in the all-wheel drive system in your car. Now make sure you follow me on Instagram to find out what the next teardown video is going to be. Subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to see more videos just like this one. Smile everyone!